All right, welcome back. So the last video we just got to at the start here, creating some move speeds and getting this random bounce angle and so on. Uh, we've got to sort of keep working with that. Uh, so sort of the same idea, um, actually, after we check the collision here. So what I'm going to do is just come down into the move. Okay. And so if we haven't checked collision, right, we were, or if check collision was, was false, right, um, it's going to be moving. So obviously here we got to deal with the angle as well. So I'm just going to come into here and give myself a little bit of space. And actually we're going to change that up. But in here, oops. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So uh, we're going to calculate that VX again. So it's actually the same thing that we did before. So VX is equal to move speed times math F. So again, we're just getting calculating that um, uh, exposition okay, by the bounce angle. And then um, we have to deal with if it's positive or negative in terms of the direction for y. Uh, so for the sign, so if the move speed is less than zero, just like we did above, because remember at the start, the ball was always moving to the left. That's one of the things that we decided upon. Um, then vy is going to be just again, basically the same as above, move speed times, but we've got to multiply by the negative cos, or sorry, the negative sine math f dot sign and then again the bounce angle okay and then otherwise else we have to do it basically by without the negative there so I'm just going to copy this put that in and just get rid of the negative there all right so those two um, should should give us the uh, proper calculation of the x and y coordinate there. Oops, and I should call that not vy. Oops, oh yeah, I should call it vy. There we go. Okay, now in terms of the movement, we've got to modify this a little bit. Um, just because it's, we've now got to sort of modify the x uh, and the y values here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just come into this transform.local position. That's okay. Plus equals. We're going to change this up here. So it's going to be a new vector 3, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the ball direction, okay, uh, and we're going to times, sorry, dot x, we're going to times that by uh, vx, okay, uh, and then times time dot delta time, oops, go, and so that would be our x movement. Okay, then we have to have it going sort of in the y, so we'll just put that angle of vy, and then, uh, oops, sorry, vy times time dot delta time as well. And then the x, or sorry, the z, we're not moving it along there, so we'll just keep that at zero there. Okay, so basically um, we've got that working. Um, that should give us sort of movement there. Now, there's a little bit more that we have to do. Um, so one of the things that we have to deal with is if it's moving in the, basically to switch the, the direction here, um, and that's going to occur when we collide with the player here. So if um, move speed is less than zero, what we have to do is take the move speed and basically switch it around, so times it by negative one. So whatever it was, whether it was positive or negative, is now going to be the opposite because we're just simply multiplying by the uh, negative one. So times the move speed. So this will just simply switch. Whoops, switch the uh, uh, direction here. Okay, and then what we have to see is if it's collided with the player. Um, we're going to do a couple things here. So this actually, we're going to have to create a couple. Um, uh, booleans here. So I'm going to go back up. So we'll just leave that here for the moment. I'm just going to go back up to the top and we're going to create uh, three booleans. So it's private bools. And so three of them, uh, one would be collided with player. 
and then we'll do one with collided with uh, computer, and then we'll do one collided with wall. So basically, these three variables will be either true or false if they've collided with the wall or the paddle, and that will help us decide sort of the direction that it needs to be sent. So we need to know when it's collided with the paddle or with the player. Um, so what I'm going to do is we know it here when it checked the collision. Right. So if this one, this was collecting or sorry, colliding with the paddle here, so we can actually I'm going to get rid of that debug collision. You might not have that there when I was working mine out. Um, I'm going to set that to true. So collided with player. Right. I'm going to set that to true. And I think I, oh wait, there we are. Good. This one here, because this was the uh, computer paddle. So I'm going to set that to collided. I can spell collided right. Collided with computer, and I'm going to set that equal to true. Okay. Collided with computer. Oops. I need a capital there. Perfect. Okay. So now that I've got those set to true when the collisions happened. Um, so if now if I was back here. So what I'm going to do here. So under this, if move speed is less than zero, I'm going to multiply it by the opposite. Then what I'm going to do here is if we've collided with the player. Okay. So if I've collided with the player, what I have to do here is set that to false now, just to reset it until next time. So I'm going to set that to false. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to create two, do sort of two cal calculations here. Basically, I want to figure out how far away from the center the ball collided. So what I'm going to do here is take the paddle player dot transform dot local position dot y. So basically that's the center of the paddle and minus the center transform dot local position center of the y. Okay, so the idea here would be if it hits the paddle, if it hit basically the center, the difference would be zero. But as you get further and further away from the center of the paddle where the ball's hitting, this number will get larger and larger. So we have a, a certain distance from the, 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 the center of the paddle, basically. And then what we need to do is basically turn this into a percent. Um, we won't make it percent percent, but we're going to divide it by the length of the um, paddle, basically. So we call this the normalized relative intersection, intersect, intersect y, intersect y. And so the idea here is, like I said, it's basically a percent. So I'm going to take the, um, let me just see here, the relative intersect y. Okay, so what we calculated above, and I'm going to divide that by um, the player paddle height divided by two. Okay, so that value should be um, basically, you know, it, it would be zero. Let's just say this was just to make things easy. Maybe this was two, right? The player, let's imagine the player height was four. So half of that would be two. Um, if you were right at the center, it would be zero divided by two. So this normalized value would be zero. But as you get closer and closer, say you're halfway, this would be one divided by two, it'd be 0.5, right? So it's sort of like 50% of the way. And if you were all at the end, um, it would be two divided by two. So then you'd have, you know, 100%. So this would give us sort of how far, almost like a percent, how far we are away from the center. And depending on the size of that value, the angle will be greater. So the, the bigger the um, bigger this value, okay, the farther you're away from the center, the bigger the angle of the, um, the bounce. So that's what we're going to calculate next. So we're going to do the bounce angle is equal to that value we just 
calculates the normalized relative intersect y. I don't know why mine doesn't suggest those, but anyways, times uh, the max angle, which we calculated was 45 degrees, okay, or we set as 45 degrees. And then I'm going to show you something else. You don't always have to do that calculation there. Um, you can do the math f, and there's actually a little quick one here, degrees to radians. So that will convert it into radians without having to, you know, multiply by 180 and pi and so on. Okay, but that does the same thing. So basically we're taking that percent of the max angle and changing it into radians there. Now the nice thing, of course, is that the computer will be basically the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to make sure I got this if closed up. Okay, that looks okay. So I'm going to just copy this. Put this down. So if collided with, not player now, but computer. And so collided with computer is going to be false. And then not player, paddle player, but paddle computer. That looks okay. And then computer paddle height. And the rest should be okay. Now I know there's going to be one little issue here. Um, this here, if move speed is less than zero, it actually should be less move speed is greater than zero there. So make that change. Let's just see what happens. I'm a little worried about the start, but uh, we'll see here. Nope. Ah. A couple errors here. Let's just fix this up. Get random float bounce. We just pause it here. And so it was a very simple error there. I just had messed up um, some bracket problems, right? So just make sure I didn't close up that move one properly. Okay, so that does close up there. So that should solve that. Let's just see if this works here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, that's one issue, is that it's not going to detect the walls. So we'll have to deal with that in the next video. Let's just see if I can get one. Now the problem, let's see. Hmm. It seems to be always going down here. It seems to always be 45. Obviously a bit of an issue here. Might just have to go and take a look at this. I think it might be um, right at the start there. So let me just check something and I'll come back with the solution. All right, I think I figured the problem out. So let's just show you that my game's working here and then we'll just go over those little problems. So it's shooting in the right way now. Obviously we don't have against the wall yet. We'll fix that up in the next video. Let's just see if I can get a good one here. There we go. And so if I hit it basically in the center, it bounces back pretty straight. If I get it to an angle, it goes down. And then just to show you, if I hit near the top, it will bounce up. Just need to get, there we go. So if I get there, and you can see it bouncing higher up. Good, so the changes I had to make, um, we're at the start here. This one, make sure, just like we changed before, um, if it's greater than zero, set it to negative one. That will get it bouncing in the right direction. That was one little problem there. And the other one was sort of a more serious one, which was giving me greater problems. And uh, that involved forgetting to do the else. So we had an if there was uh, no collision and we got it moving. Okay. Unfortunately, I did not put this part here into an else, which caused a bit of a issue, right? Because the only other thing is if, if there is collision, then we need to check who it played it with and so on. So if there is a collision, we change the move speed to negative and then depending on who we collided with. So I didn't have that, which caused a bit of an issue. So just make sure that this bottom half um, is wrapped in and else there, and that should be good. Now what I'll do in just the last little bit is just show the whole code. So there's the top, you can pause it. Okay, the start function, you could pause it. The update function, not very much. The check collision function, again, you could pause it. And then 
Uh, actually, I'll move that all the way down. Okay, and then the final one. Ah. 